Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. As we look at the temperature trends over the next 10 days, what these graphics do a better job of showing really is the transition that we'll be looking at once we get around the December 11th and 12th time frame. Up until that point, dealing with nearly seasonal temperatures across the Corn Belt here, some fluctuations here, periods of uh, cooler temperatures followed by periods of milder temperatures, but not really straying too far from average. But again, as we look at the December 11th, 12th, 13th time frame, watching some cold air that could be pooling here, dropping down into central Canada and then parts of the northern plains in the upper Midwest. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Looking at a quieter week ahead as we talk about temperature or precipitation, again, on the heels of two rather large storm systems, two disruptive storm systems. We're a bit quiet on the back side here, watching for perhaps things to pick up across the south, uh, parts of the southern Corn Belt into the mid-south, perhaps the eastern Corn Belt looking at a more active pattern as we head into next week. Chilly across the region here as we wake up today. Uh, again, not just across the Corn Belt, but across the entire lower 48. Temperatures this morning generally in the teens from the north to the 20s to the lower 30s across the southern Corn Belt. And those 30s do extend all the way down to the Gulf Coast here across parts of southern Florida, or northern Florida, uh, parts of southern Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Now as we take a look at the uh, satellite picture here on Tuesday morning, Again, we're seeing the jet stream do something a bit different. Last week, we talked about upper-level divergence, these big troughs in the west. They dig across the central plains, and then we see the winds kind of fan out, diverging aloft. We talked about how that leads to the development of storm systems and active weather patterns. Now, on the flip side, you can almost see what the jet stream's doing here. We've got upper-level convergence. We've got converging winds across the central plains uh, and the, the, the corn belt here. And again, that leads to sinking motion aloft and a quieter weather pattern. As we take a look at the radar here, again, quiet across almost the entire lower 48. We've got some coastal precipitation here across New England. We've got a frontal boundary that's kind of making its way quietly through the upper Midwest, perhaps bringing a light snowflake or two to Wisconsin overnight. Same thing across parts of lower Michigan today, maybe a snowflake or two, but not talking about accumulating snow. As we look at the National Weather, uh, National weather Service hazards map, again, looking at that is reflecting that quiet pattern. Now, the only thing we see here is some lakeshore flood advisories across parts of uh, southern Lake Michigan there where high winds over the next 24 to 48 hours could create some coastal flooding issues. Elsewhere across the Corn Belt, though, quiet as we look at the high-resolution NAM model, perhaps some snow flurries Wednesday across Michigan and far eastern Ohio, otherwise quiet across the Corn Belt all the way through midday on Thursday. Now, as we take a look at the jet stream again, just broadly speaking, here's that upper level convergence that we're seeing across the central portions of the country. As we kind of take a look at where we're headed over the next couple of days, we'll go ahead and jump back here. We're looking at 500 millibar uh, wind speeds here across the United States. So heading through Thursday into Friday, as we get to Friday and Saturday, we're going to watch a small little trough uh, caught up here across the south, move through parts of Texas, Oklahoma into uh, the southern U.S. That's going to bring the chance for some precipitation, perhaps across parts of far southern Missouri into the mid-south. We'll look at that here a, a little more specifically in just a moment. Then as we head into next week, we'll watch a potential storm system here. Uh, you're seeing the strong upper-level winds racing out of the southwest here as we get into Sunday night into Monday, digging into a trough across uh, the Great Lakes into the eastern Corn Belt. This is one that could bring some precipitation to parts of the eastern Corn Belt into the mid-south as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. What really drives the temperatures then is what's coming in on the backside. So here's our first main storm system. You see the upper level winds uh, diverging aloft here. That's what leads to our, our storm system here, or at least what aids in it. But you see on the backside here, this next wave coming in from uh, the Canadian Prairie here. This is the one, this is the trough that really digs in here uh, and brings that chance for some colder temperatures across the Canadian Prairie into parts of uh, the upper Midwest and the Northern Plains as we get into uh, the middle and later parts of next week. This is around December 11th and 12th. So quiet across the Corn Belt. We do have the potential for some precipitation across the south as we head into the weekend. Then watching a potential storm system as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week, bringing some precipitation to parts of the eastern Corn Belt and the mid-south. And then as we head into mid to late next week, watching for this bigger trough uh, to kind of rotate in on the backside, bringing in cooler temperatures to parts of the region. So visualizing that with our precipitation forecast, Again, we can kind of quickly go through the first couple of days here, quiet across the Corn Belt through 
uh, through Thursday. It's as we get into late Thursday and Friday, we watch this first little system just scoot off to the south, perhaps bringing some precipitation to parts of southeastern Kansas into southern Missouri, maybe far southern Illinois, generally along and south of the Ohio River Valley, then into parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. High pressure on the backside there, so again, a pleasant weekend for many across the Corn Belt. Uh, and then as we head into early next week, that's when we'll watch Monday and Tuesday for this next wave to kind of dig in from the southwest, uh, bringing that precipitation chance here. This is midday on Monday from the GFS model right now. And again, we have decent agreement between the GFS and the European model right now. Uh, but this could bring the potential for maybe some light snow across parts of the, the Dakotas into the upper Midwest perhaps some showers across the eastern Corn Belt, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, into the Mid-South, Kentucky, and Tennessee before racing off to the east. Of course, we'll save the specifics here for our later forecast. Uh, really, my bigger point is that it's quiet up to that point till we get to Monday or Tuesday. That is simply what we have to talk about at this point. If I show you the accumulated precipitation forecast, again, here's what makes its way through here uh, Thursday and Friday. Otherwise, look at the entire Corn Belt here as we just watch uh, a much drier week perhaps the entire uh, region here that, that's been circled here remaining mostly if not entirely dry all the way into the weekend. Now as we look at the temperatures just kind of playing this out over the next seven to ten days again you see mostly seasonally appropriate temperatures there you see some fluctuations between there's some milder weather maybe a splash of cooler weather than a another burst of milder air in advance of that uh, early week trough next week that would mean maybe some warmer temperatures as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week across the Corn Belt and then you see at the end of the loop right there, that's when we start to work some cooler temperatures in uh, to parts of the Canadian Prairie and the northern uh, plains into the upper Midwest. Finishing then with a look at the high temperatures for the day today, chilly off to the north in the mid to upper 20s across Minnesota and Wisconsin, all the way down to the 50s to near 60 in parts of Kansas. Similar story for the day on Wednesday and Thursday as we head into Friday watching that cooler air kind of try to work its way further south a bit, but it doesn't make its way in all the way before we get another push of some warmer air on Saturday. Highs once again in the mid to upper 20s across the north, all the way down to the 50s to near 60 from parts of Kansas into the mid-south. As we look at low temperatures then, waking up tomorrow morning to temperatures in the lower 20s across the north to the mid-30s in the south. Teens possible across the Dakotas into Minnesota and Wisconsin Thursday morning. 30s to near 40 across the south. Single digits, a bit cooler even on Friday morning across the northern plains. That cool air shifts east just slightly into parts of Wisconsin and the uh, UP of Michigan for Saturday morning. As always, Eric Snodgrass will have our long-range U.S. focus weather analysis posted to the site tomorrow morning. I will be back to talk about the Corn Belt once again on Friday morning. Hope you're having a great week, a great day, uh, and a great start to your week.